This short video will demonstrate how to design a base plate connection that is loaded with shear, biaxial bending, and axial load using a finite element analysis in VA Connect. Let's get started. As shown in the detail, the base plate will connect a W12 by 120 column to a 24 inch thick concrete slab. The column will be in the center of a 36 inch square pedestal. For simplicity, we will only design this column for one load set. Base plates in VA Connect can be analyzed using the procedures outlined in the AISC Steel Design Guide 1 as discussed in a separate training video or using a finite element analysis. Note the analysis method must be set to FEA to analyze base plates with biaxial bending since the Design Guide 1 is limited to uniaxial bending. We will start out in VA Connect by adjusting the geometry of the connection. First, we will set the properties for the concrete pedestal. Next, let's adjust the dimensions of the base plate, making it 19 inches square and 1 inch thick for starters. We will leave the material set to A36 steel. Next, we can click on the column and choose a W12 by 120 from the shape database. Finally, let's select the bolts and assume they have a 7 8 inch diameter and use the default layout. Now with the geometry roughed in, we can look at the project status and see that the base plate detailing is okay since the bolt base plate edge distance and spacing is adequate. Clicking in the white space, we can change the analysis method from AISC Design Guide 1 to Finite Element Analysis. Now we see a number of different parameters that appear that must be set in order to get valid analysis results. The mesh element area parameter is used to set the maximum element area in the finite element model. As with all FEA models, it is important to refine the mesh until the analysis results converge, and we will do this after the loads are applied to the model. The concrete stiffness modulus parameter is used to define the stiffness of the concrete. The program uses this parameter to define the stiffness of the spring elements that model the concrete support. Note, this parameter should always be modified by the engineer as the default value in the program is not necessarily the standard value and the analysis results can change significantly with a change in the concrete stiffness. Moving on, we see that the stiffness of the anchors can be assumed to be infinite or an anchor stiffness can be specified. The ignore demand concentrations parameter can be used to ignore the spike in bending moment demand near the corners of rectangular or I-shaped columns. At times, this parameter may need to be set to yes to allow the analysis results to converge. When set to yes, there is an option to specify the ignore demand concentration distance. And finally, we also have the option to export the FEA model to visual analysis to see the finite element model that is being analyzed. Next, we will move on to applying the loads to the connection. For load set 1, we will enter the values for the dead load and the wind load. Now with the service level loads defined, we can go to the load case manager and select which building code we want to use for the load combinations. Note that the load combinations are automatically implemented based on the applied loads. With the loads specified for the connection, we can now turn our attention to the project status and see the status of the limit states that are checked automatically. Immediately, we see that concrete bearing and base plate design are failing with large unity values. Clicking on concrete bearing limit state, we see that the bearing stress that is obtained from the finite element analysis is larger than the bearing capacity and therefore the unity value exceeds 1 and the limit state fails. Clicking on the plate bending limit state, we also see that the plate bending moment MU from the finite element analysis exceeds the plate's flexural capacity and the unity exceeds 1. Switching back to the model view, let's increase the thickness of our base plate and see if we can get the limit states to pass. Increasing the thickness to 1 and 3 quarter inches causes both limit states to pass. Now we can refine the mesh to make sure our analysis results have converged. Decreasing the mesh element area from 1 square inch to 0.75 square inches, we see that the concrete bearing unity does not significantly change but that the plate bending unity increases and is just above 1.0. Reducing the mesh element area again to 0.5 square inches causes the unity value for plate bending to further increase. 
One thing to consider is that the maximum plate bending moment MU might be the result of a stress concentration at the corner of the column. Setting the ignored demand concentrations to yes and setting the ignored demand concentrations distance to a quarter of an inch, we see that the unity significantly decreases. If we further decrease the mesh element area, the plate bending unity does not significantly change, showing that the results have converged. Therefore, if we are not concerned with the stress concentration right at the corner of the column, we can use a 1 3 quarter inch thick plate for our design. If we want to learn more about the finite element model, we can export the FEA model to visual analysis. In VA, we can look at the mesh that was generated automatically. We can also look at the applied loads for the various cases, and we can view the analysis results in detail. Going back to VA Connect, let's now turn our attention to the Anchorage analysis, which has info in the project status. Clicking on this limit state, we see a note that says, ACI Chapter 17 assumes a rigid base plate analysis. As a result, Anchorage design checks are not available when the connection is analyzed using the finite element method. While the FEA analysis method does not perform the Anchorage checks, the bolt forces for the various load combinations can be seen in the report view. In addition to the bolt forces, a concise design summary is automatically generated showing the unity values for each limit state. We can add a detailed report showing the calculations for each limit state, and we can also add summary tables for each limit to the report. In just a few minutes, we have used VA Connect to create an optimal design for our base plate connection with biaxial bending using a finite element analysis and produce a report to document our work. To try VA Connect for yourself, head over to our website and download the free trial.